Welcome to the Picking Nerds. Today we're talking about traps. These commander cards, not all they're cracked up to be. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. We're still bringing you videos every single day. Every day? And if you'd like to support us, there's a link in the description that leads to Patreon.com, and there's names of generous patrons scrolling right now. If you want to scroll with them, all you have to do is head over to Patreon.com and join that tier of our Patreon. You can be one of the scrolling patrons and get a shout-out like this. D-Will, it's your shout-out. Thank you for supporting us. All you have to do is go to Patreon.com to get a shout-out, just like D-Will just did. You could be like D-Will, or you can just support us indirectly by buying stuff for yourself, which is also acceptable. TCG Player, there's an affiliate link in the description. When you navigate to the site through our link, all that it cares about is that you start with that, and when you check out with cards, we get a kickback courtesy of them, not you. Yes, I mean, you spend zero extra dollars, get the same exact cards, as long as you start with our link, we get a kickback. Same is true for Dragon Shield. They have the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. They're picking your juice on literally every single one of their decks. So if you would like those sleeves, just go to our affiliate link in the description, buy them, and they will be shipped directly to your house. There's an EU and a US link in the description. Channel sponsored by Moxfield. Will you be able to guess where the ad is? Let's not kid ourselves. Not even close. You will never guess. They have a 0% chance. And also, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. And before we begin this video, I'm going to do a little bit of a rant. We're never getting rid of pronouns in the beginning of our video. Of Shuffle Scuffle? Shuffle Scuffle. Uh, our pronouns and anyone else's pronouns in the show will be announced in the beginning. And if you don't know, my pronouns are they, them. And I know people might have a problem with that, so... It also shows you how old our last video was, that your pronouns were not they, them. That my pronouns were he, him. I need to record a new... I need to record a new voiceover for other videos that we recorded in the past as well. Yeah, if you watch an hour-long video and you're upset about what is probably combined two seconds, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have words for you. I would say realistically, it's about this is max ten seconds of the whole video is pronouns. I would say it's like two seconds or three seconds. I, I it doesn't matter. Regardless, it really doesn't matter. You're picking a something that is less than one percent of the video and choosing to be mad about it. I do not care. This video is about traps, commander cards that are traps, sort of like when you're looking to upgrade your deck and sort of increase the power level, what cards are just not all they seem, yeah. they, they're they really not all they're cracked up to be, they're kind of disappointing, they don't play as good as they look per se. Yes, and for this we're trying to avoid cards we've talked about before. We we talk about cards a lot, right? This is our channel, this is the Nitpicking Nerds, we nitpick all the time. Every day. We, literally every single day. So we're trying to pick some cards that we don't talk about as much though. The first one. We have talked about actually fairly recently, but I want to talk about it as a trap, like where we're, why we're avoiding these. And it is green signets and green talismans. Now, green signets and green talismans are as strong as the others, uh, as non green signets and non green talismans. But the huge difference is that green is the color of ramp in Magic the Gather, in Commander. So we have much better options. If all the colors had uh, the ability to use this stuff green hat, talismans and signets would not be very good cards. There's, they would be synergy pieces, and that's kind of where they stand in green decks. Very few green decks, especially two-color green decks, because they're signets and talismans. So you're like a two-color green deck that has to be artifact-based to really get maximized synergy. But I feel like basically anything else, uh, you're losing out on synergy or power, both things everyone's looking for when trying to upgrade their decks, which is the stipulation for this. Uh, you're missing out when you go for signets. You're you're like it's one less creature in your creature deck. It's one less land on the battlefield in your landfall deck or whatever. Yeah, and like we said, like I just said, these cards are not bad by any. I'm not trying to tell you green signet is not powerful. It'll never perform. In fact, a lot of games you won't recognize the difference between a green signet and uh, a two mana ramp spell like ramp of growth. Uh, you won't see the difference. But 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 we can just do better um, in commander. Artifacts susceptible to board wipes, to removal, lots of stuff like that. And lands just aren't because of the social contract. Yeah, you're gonna every time you lose a talisman, you can just think, I'm down for every turn I take for the rest of the game. I'm down one mana, and then it just keeps adding up. Oh, have you ever had those turns where you like, you know, you get all your artifact ramp, and then someone kind of like bane's of progress, and it just takes you back to the stone. It's like I had seven mana last turn. Now I have three. Yeah, I missed. A land drop, but I didn't notice. But now I notice. Now I notice immediately. Yeah, I missed. I missed my last two land drops, but I was fine because I had two signets and uh, you know a soul ring, and that's gone. <laughs> uh, number number two, they're in no order. This is just the second one. It's brainstorm. One mana, draw three, then you put two back. 
We're probably going to get a lot of flack for this. Now, I will say, Brainstorm has plenty of applications in very, like, we're talking niche strategies. Just because Brainstorm is good in Yenit Cryptic Sovereign doesn't mean that it's good in Commander or that I would recommend playing it. I think it's probably one of the most overplayed cards in the entire format. It's in 29% of blue decks. Ultimately, in a lot of them, it amounts to just a weird cantrip. Um, so Brainstorm is an obviously strong magic card, and if you always are going to reliably have shuffle effects when you play a Brainstorm, it's a good card. Uh, that's not most decks. I don't know how reliably you can do that. Even in your five-color decks, you're, what, you're up to ten fetches, and can you reliably say, I'm always going to have one of these when I have the Brainstorm? The answer is no. But also, like, not every deck is interested in a cantrip, even if it's a good cantrip. It, Do you play this true. in your creature deck? Even if you had a guaranteed shuffle, like, it doesn't it doesn't really help you. Yeah, give me, uh, like you said, I just want synergy. Like, I'm um, I'm not saying, we're not saying Brainstorm is bad. Just like Green Talismans, Brainstorm, strong magic card. In fact, very strong magic card. Probably one of the top 100 mag best magic cards. Uh, for 1v1. For 1v1, yes. I'm sorry, yeah, that that's kind of important. For 1v1. Because the commander, it doesn't make our deck. Because the commander, it doesn't make our deck. Yes, uh, but in 1v1, it's like one of the best it's one of the best magic cards. But it's not converting because it's just cantrips aren't something every deck needs. Not every deck is playing Ponder, right? And Ponder, I think, is better and requires no synergy. So as soon as you have synergy, if you can take advantage of this card draw, drawing three in some way, because this card does say draw three on it for one mana, and that is extremely unique, and that is extremely powerful. Right. I understand that exceptions exist for every rule, but give me a free pass just for this one. I, I know that there are exceptions where Brainstorm is good, and I really don't necessarily need I to really, hear about them again. I, I mean, I almost never play Brainstorm. It's not a card that ends up in my decks. It's really specific. Uh, those 12 decks, great. But everywhere else, I think you can probably just try to trim it. Agreed. Uh, next, we have Nissa who shakes the world. Five mana Planeswalker. Whenever you tap the forest, four mana, you get an extra green. And then it does nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so it actually has like a five loyalty and it pluses to untap a land. But if you choose to do that, a whole untap thing, you're, it gets three counters, becomes a creature. We don't want to put our lands in danger like that. It puts them susceptible to board wipes. And yes, this is doubling mana. This is like Mirari's Wake is like a niche card that I will play sometimes. I think it's pretty good in certain decks. I don't want this ever. This is Mirari's Wake that can be attacked, only works for forest, and doesn't do anything else. It really doesn't. Like, I'm being honest. I don't want to put my lands in danger. I do not want that. Best case scenario... It just sits there and you try to proliferate the counters and then maybe go for an ultimate or something. This just seems like so much trouble for not a lot of profit. We talked about Mirari's Wake. You're still paying mana, so you're still down, what, three mana when you cast this, even if you untap the land, but you're probably not going to, so you're down five mana. Then when you untap and produce, what is it, 12 with your six lands? You're really only up one land, one mana there. You've gotten your mana back and now you're up one. I think it's really important on Planeswalkers that... Um, Either they're up one, either they're plus or they're minus is really powerful and synergistic to your deck, or or the static overall is really synergistic to your deck. And this just isn't going to be powerful enough. What deck is like? I, well, I guess every deck is like I want more mana, but that this card's not going to do that because you know what's going to happen? You're going to play it, you're going to get more mana, and that's going to die, and that's all that's going to happen. And you're going to be really sad. Yeah, I'm really not a big fan of Nissa. Uh, this next this next one. These next two, really, uh, it's more of a philosophy thing, I think. It's Arcane Lighthouse, which removes Hexproof and Shroud from opponent's creatures, and Homeward Path, which gains control of all creatures everybody owns. These two are all about opportunity cost, 100%. What are you giving up for these? Now, in a matter where you're going to see these things like stealing your creatures a lot, or you're going to see Hexproof a lot, these are going to be very useful. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't think I can ever slot these in, ever in a three color deck because uh, you have very few utility slots and these are too niche for me. Yeah, there's colorless a, lands. There's a lot of good uh there's a lot of good utility lands you can actually get stuff out of. Maybe one and two color decks in some situation, but these are like on the fringe. These are like fringe playable to me. There you there's no guarantee in any game. There's not even a high likelihood I don't think that either one of these is going to be useful. So really I think to me it comes down to like the thought process of when building a deck is like, well, I don't want to lose to Hexproof and Shroud, so I'm going to play this or I don't want to lose to Agent of Treachery, so I'm going to play this. But I think not only do both of these cards not necessarily even solve your problems, I don't think it's a, a good idea, and it'll make your deck. I think it'll make your deck worse to prepare for things that you might see that are objectively not in every deck. The whole idea of these is you put them in because they're free rolls, right? But I think people are giving up a lot more in the utility slot than they realize because utility lands are really strong. Again, 
you know, one color deck, I could see these being totally reasonable. But as soon as you hit two colors, you start losing a lot of utility slots and also you get access to other cards. I'm just, I'm low on these overall. Maybe one color decks, that's about it. I don't know about you. Have you ever built a one color deck and been like, I have two complete flex slots that could be literally anything? Um, I don't really get that way. No, I have I haven't put these in decks, but I'm saying I, this is where I can see it. Like I'm not trying to I'm not saying they're great, and I'm yeah. not saying that these are the cards I'm playing because I don't play these cards. I never put these in decks. I do think they're traps overall, but I'm saying I'm more giving like I see where people think and want to play these. And it's just, I don't agree with it. They get you out of tight spots. It's, it's, you know what? It's the same thing as Cross and Grip. And maybe we'll have to do a whole video about whatever effect that is. But it's like the, like, almost like confirmation bias. We're like, yeah, this, like, really swings the game one on a hundred times. But then, like, the rest of it is just kind of sitting there. Yeah, that's very true. Next, Colony Heart Expedition. I just think this is a bad ramp spell. It, it's, it comes down, it's a two-mana enchantment. And each landfall, it gets a counter. Then the three, sack it and get two basics onto the battlefield. Yeah, I think if the word landfall wasn't on this card, it would be a lot less appealing. It looks like it just goes right in those decks because it says landfall. We're playing a bunch of lands. We're going to be able to get those three quest counters off. But how valuable is that? Eh, not very. It's really just like a reskinned explosive vegetation. It, it's slow. It's way too slow. Um, I think this card is just so far down on the ramp chain, right? Mm -hmm. Like we just did a ramp video, go check that one out, where we just, we uh, graded, or, or we did a tier list of the ramp spells, and that thing's just gonna be down in F tier. Not because it's awful, not because they'll never do anything, but because your options are so much better. You never ever need to go to this card, and I just feel like it is a trap. Like. It may be if you just have it. It's this is a card I would only ever play if I'm building out of a trade binder and I have it and I don't have other ramp options. If if I have the options of all the ramp spells, this isn't even coming close. This never even like this isn't on my radar. Well, the problem is if you need lands, this is a brick. If you are like mm -hmm. I need lands, this isn't a land and it's not even close to a land. If you're ripping this off the top or you're out of land drops and you play this. I don't know what you're going to do because you're not going to get those basics anytime soon. It reminds me of something like Phyrexian Arena where if you play this early and it comes out on turn two, it's pretty decent. then it's really strong. Uh, but how reliably can we draw one of early in the game? Not. We, Eight, 8%? Yeah, it's not going to happen 9%? very often. We want, we want this on turn two and that's when it's going to be good. And we just can't reliably do that. And on top of that, even if it is good, sometimes people could just remove this. And having my ramp be removable in my green deck... I don't like that. It's not dice removal. It's like, it's a ramp spell, well, and it's slower, and it can be removed, whereas the other ones can't. You're putting it's, it's putting something at risk that you don't put at risk with every it's other ramp spell. not normally at risk. Like, the fact that it can is just definitely a downside compared to Cultivate, which cannot. Yes, exactly. Oh, this next one, super underwhelming. You may have heard of it. It's Grave Titan. It's a six mana six six with Death Touch for no reason. And then when it enters, you make two two twos, and when it attacks, you make two two twos. I think this is like. The beginning of the let's power up my deck, like the first thing you cut, it is just so medium. And it's a meme on the channel. We're mostly just joshing at Grave Titan right now. Yeah, I mean, Grave Titan is just a meme. Like, we don't put it in our decks. We don't stick you put it in your decks. But if you want to cut it from your deck, you know you can do that. You can go to Moxfield where you already have all your decks. And if you don't, go ahead, uh, go there, click sign up. Go ahead and make your account uh, with your, I believe your email is poopyface at poopyface, gmail at poopyface.com. Yes. Uh, put that in and then put in your password, which is poopyface, I believe. Which is a very weak password. Very weak password. They're going to guess it. Uh, but you're going to sign in after that and then you can check out all your poopy decks. I think Grave Titan should be the the mascot for Moxfield. He can just be like looking through, uh, he's going to be on his computer like hunched over. You know, the zombie tokens can be like holding the monitor up. I think that would work. He could be hanging out in the little circle. You could be hanging out in the circle because he's never really not hanging out in decks. A rave, they could have Rave Titan as their... Yeah, you can sort your Grave Titans. You can tag your Grave Titans. You can uh, cut your Grave Titans, more importantly. I think all those features on Moxfield make it great. If you haven't seen the Rave Titan, head over... I, it, I believe it's, some, it's somewhere in the Nitpicky Nerds it's, Discord. It's a GIF in our Nitpicky Nerds Discord. It's literally just... It's a, it's a, it's a Grave Titan that dances with a glow stick with a back and forth wait we can just put it on screen I'm sure I'll put it on yeah, screen well, it's a little actually. dance in Grave Titan this is called the Rave Titan Rave Titan is really good way better than Grave Titan way, uh, way better let's get to the the actual list again uh, this is Torian Mauler Changeling it gets a counter whenever an opponent casts a spell and I would have just put Mana Gorge or Hydra up here but it, this is probably worse because it doesn't have trample so it's harder to get the damage through only I will say only playable in like decks that really need the tribe because it's changeling. I have seen Mana Gorge I had to do something in Commander. I've never seen Tori Muller be relevant in Commander. Poor guy. Uh, 
Poor guy. Uh, but I, I think I, I think that this is this might be the, a good litmus test. If your tribe needs to play Taurine Mauler, your tribe is bad. But that uh, that's that means you're playing some spicy deck. It's it yeah. But uh, if if you went to Taurine Mauler, I'd say move on. Really? Yeah, move really? on with that deck. Retire it. It's probably not good. Well, so <laughs> I would I would say you you can cut Taurine Mauler from every deck as far as the stipulations of this video. Because if you've got some sweet like Cephalid tribal deck. You probably don't need to upgrade it. You probably got it maxed out already. Oh, yeah, red cephalids. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. This is it. Yeah, I think the vanilla nature of this card, even though it can get big, that we know pretty we know pretty well that's not really that valuable, just a big creature in Commander. We, uh, we have those. You need a silly big vanilla creature for it to even be worth it. Like, Lord of Extinction at least is silly big. Right, and then even then it's the, the main uh, draw towards that is like flinging it or drawing equal to its power or something. Yeah, you, you want if something's going to be big, it better be... Without evasion. Right. It better be silly. It better be lethal. Thing. Yes, and this <sighs> thing's not going to be lethal anything. It is not. What's number seven? Well, this one's actually yours, so why don't you give it a read? Uh, it's Michael Off. This is not really my card. I think it was designed by uh, Wizards of the Coast. Well, no, you put it on the list. But it's three green green for a four four. It's got Devour two, so you get two counters for every creature you eat when it enters. And then at your upkeep, you get this one one sapling for each counter on it. So the play pattern might be, you know, build a board, slam Michael Off, and then it's like, okay, we're off to the races. I'm going to devour eight creatures to get 16 counters. Then you get to do the, just you wait until my next turn, then you untap, then you get 16 one ones. that's pretty sweet, and then you go, just you wait, because next turn, I'm going to be able to attack with those one ones. and then you go to your next turn, you get 16 more, and you're like, now we're cooking, because next turn, I'll be able to attack for an actual relevant amount, and then you maybe even send 16 out, and you deal like 8 damage, and that's that's the most generous I've ever been because with this card, because most of the time... You play it and it just dies, or you play it and it doesn't do anything. The problem with Michael Loth is your board has to already be good for it to be good. And why do we we don't need a new way to build our board when our board's already built? We need a way to pay that off at that point. I mean, how and long if I, are you how long are you waiting for why, this? Well, why would I why would I want my payoff for my large board to be a way to build a large board? <laughs> that's not that's not what I want for my payoffs. My payoffs for having a large board should be damage, pushing through, winning the game. That's Asian. what I want to do. That's what I want to do when I have 17 creatures aboard. I don't want to sack 13 of them into Michael Off. Your reward for building a big board should be damage. We should be winning. It should not be more creatures. <laughs> it's win. This is the this is a win more card. Yeah, and on is. top of being win more, it is a slow magic card. Like you just went over. It's slow. It's win more. And it's just not necessary. It doesn't actually do anything unless you're already ahead. Yeah, not a big fan of Michael Loth. Uh, this is the next one. All right. Maybe one of our most controversial opinions of all time in the history of the universe. This could not be controversial. It is. Don't even go there. Have you seen our short comments? This is Secret Rendezvous and Cut a Deal. Cut a Deal is each opponent draws one, then you draw three, basically. And then Secret Rendezvous is you draw three, and somebody else draws three. I don't think white is at the, at, at the point, or really has ever been at the point, where I would need these cards. And I'm not really sure why I would want to give out cards like for every time you can make a political deal there's another time where you can't and this just rots in your hand or you have to cast it and then you're just in trouble so let's just take politics out of it for one second okay so let's just talk about these on the level of like what these cards actually do you draw three someone else draws three that's not the worst but then you have to look at it like let's actually reflect on it we're casting a spell for three mana we're spending three mana now we've paid three mana and a spell and I got something and someone else got the exact same thing, meaning they got more than me. And also literally more than you, because when you draw three and they draw three, you spent a spell. You're up two, they're up three. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah th like, they, they didn't spend mana, they got the same amount of cards, and you spent a card. So you're basically down a card. That's not, that's just not a good rate. Now, Secret Round of View, I think, like I said this before, this card has a discussion point to be had if you draw three and an opponent draws two. There is something there. That or you, card or is, you draw four, they draw three. Yeah, like, that is where this card is interesting. It's like, at that point, we're talking about a card that might actually do something. But that it's out the window because that's not what this card does. Um, this card is even amount of cards when you're spending th a card in three mana is not an even amount of cards. It is you losing three mana and you losing a card. It's a neat challenge to rely on politics and maybe play the, like, well, I'm going to play this in my deck and let's see what I can do with it. That's pretty cool. But like this video we said in the beginning... We're kind of trying to upgrade decks and maybe increase power level a little bit and like look at what are some cards we can cut if I'm trying to make my deck just a little bit smoother and more consistent. I think these ones are like first ones that can go. Very easily, yeah. I'm just, uh, it's, it's the problem is I don't want to have to spend the mana. That's my issue. Jeez. Okay, uh, what about Cryptic Command? Cryptic Command is, I think, a big trap 
from the days of how good it was in modern, how good it was in standard back in the day. And it is one blue, blue, blue. Well, you have four options. Counter a spell, tap all creatures you don't control, draw a card, and return target permanent to its owner's hand. Now, these options are all decent. So what we end up most of the time with this card is four mana, uh, counter a spell, draw a card. That's the most common thing. Um, I think that there is uh, quite a bit to be done with the tapping all creatures you don't control also. That all being said, it's just not good enough. This doesn't quite add up to something I'm looking for. All the modes are just not, like, I know that mi mixing and matching is, like, what's supposed to be powerful, but, like, every single mode just doesn't add up to a card I'm looking to play. Yeah, four mana is a lot to hold up. So much. Thing. And it, triple blue. Triple blue is not, like, it's not... It's not nothing. It's not free, you know, it's, you're going to have to really look at your mana base or just be one color. And you can't really reduce it to anything, you know, you got the three blue pips, so you can't, like, make it cost two or something. This thing is just kind of not what I'm looking at, especially compared to the other counter spells. <laughs> one mana, two mana, zero mana, there's like a thousand of those, and I just have to, I need some crazy synergy to go to Cryptic Command. Yeah, exactly. Four mana counter spell, like you, like you just said, that's not where we want to be. It's too much to hold up. You just said that. This is like, that's exactly what the problem with this card is, and we're not getting enough out of it. Counter draw, I don't think is very powerful. I don't think it's that's good, and I know we have other modes, but those other modes are too niche, too far between, and they're just and none of it is good enough. Bouncing a permanent for four mana and drawing a card, that's not a good spell. Yeah, I'm not there for that spell. That, that's a that's a pretty below par spell. I mean, Dismiss is two blue blue counter spell draw card, right? I will say if you're in a super, I mean a very combat heavy meta, the tap feature comes in pretty heavy, uh, especially with political deals. Ooh, what about then Bluster Squall? Maybe you want Bluster Squall? It's like blue tap a creature you don't control three and a blue tap all of them uh, play, well this is way better than bluster Squall. but you get the, the option to play it for one I'm going to say this is way better than bluster in Squall. that combat meta let me see let me see who knows oh, I, I think it's still not even close <laughs> let me see alright last one is my one of my soapbox cards I'll get up in my soapbox and tell you how much I hate it it's uh, three mana extra planar lens and it enters the battlefield you exile land you control get out of here Whew. and all lands with the same name now tap for an additional mana no I do not understand this card. It comes in, you two for one yourself. You immediately get rid of one of your permanents, and now the rest of the game you have double permanents. You have to play Snowlands in your deck, and even if you play Snowlands, you still might be doubling opponent stuff. That's totally can happen. Like yeah. Snowlands aren't they aren't secret tech anymore. No. Nobody nobody's sitting here going, Oh, no one has Snowlands in their deck. No, everyone has Snowlands in their deck. I think I play Snowlands in every deck. I play Snowlands in a lot of decks, and I just don't I don't like this card. I don't like to have to two for myself. I don't like that I have to go down the land. How late in the game do I have to play this to get my mana back right away? It feels like that answer is late enough that you could basically just play any mana doubler and then not lose a land. Yeah, I don't I, I really don't like this card. I do not like two for myself. I don't if this card is relevant, it will die, right? If it's when it's good and when it's relevant and you actually want it, it's going to be removal like target number one on the battlefield. And when it's not relevant, no one's going to care. You two for one yourself for a little bit, and then it's going to die anyway. Or it rots in your hand. I mean, this is just... How often do you want to get rid of a land? Not very often. Maybe in the super mega late game, but then I would still say, it just doesn't play... You know, I don't even like any of the mana doublers, but play Mirari's Wake. Play, um... What is that thing? Cage Sun? Yeah, play that. I don't know. And then... So we went through all that. Yes. Those are all reasons not to play it. How about, on top of all that, your mana base has to suck. Your mana base has to be all... Like, let's just say swamps. It eats your mana base alive. All basic swamps in order just to make it work, right? And maybe that's the worst example because you are kind of maybe already want to do that with Cobalt Coffers. But, sure. like, let's say you're a mono red deck or something. It's like, well, you no utility. you're basically just you lose all the colorless lands you could play. You lose all this stuff. And you're just, you're, you're snow mountaining. And every time you, every single land that's not a snow mountain makes this card worse. Yeah. And, like, it, you like if you utility lands tend to make your deck better, but in this case, you're, they're going to make your deck worse, so you have to like not play a lot of utility lands, and then if you do play like you know a decent number of utility lands, you draw a lot of those, and you draw your extra planar lands, now your extra planar lands is extra bad. I really, like, I'm off this we're card. We're so off of it. 100%. Oh. Now, if we were going to be on a video, which video would you be on? Uh, I would be on the ramp spells, because like I mentioned, why don't you go check that one out? We talk about the green signets and talismans, and the big difference between green ramp and non-green ramp, so go check out that tier list. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.